All right, folks, so I, I bit the bullet. I watched the Netflix latest uh, documentary film, uh, sort of vegan propaganda thing on the twin studies. I think it's called You Are What You Eat or something along those lines. Uh, I watched that so that you don't have to watch that. And what I will say is, you know, it, it, the premise supposedly was this is a uh, study on twins and comparing them and showing the outcomes. But really, that was sort of the, the veneer under which a huge vegan massive propaganda campaign was waged. Very similar, same form, very formulaic, this exact same thing they did in Game Changers, same sort of talking points. They brought out a lot of the same same characters. Uh, you know, they, they dug up Michael Grieger and, and uh, you know, uh, for this, uh, Pat Brown, the CEO, or former CEO and founder of Impossible Burger, who, you know, he reminded me a bit of an old woman when he, when he appeared. I thought, again, he looked like he'd been dug up, quite honestly. But anyway, um, lots of Loma Linda people, lots of ethical vegans opining about, uh, you know, how bad meat is for us and vilifying saturated fat and, uh, you know, animal agriculture is destroying the planet and on and on. The, the same overblown claims that they make and love to make with, with, you know, obviously dramatic footage and showing what, you know, often is the worst of the worst. And they co-opted a couple of, uh, a rancher and a, and a chicken farmer, former chicken farmer, in part of this to, to, to sort of claim that this is, um, uh, it's all horrible and, and there's nothing we can do about it. The only thing we can do is, is just all start eating mushrooms and plants and things like that. So with that in mind, let's talk about some of the, some of the, some of the points in the video there. So they, they follow these, I guess, 21 pairs of twins completed the study. They focus on four, two sort of obese middle-aged women, uh, a pair of younger guys and a, and a kind of middle-aged sort of guy. I think they're 40 years of age. And they, they measured a, num a few things, you know, what, you know, there were definitely some things they measured, some of the things which are probably of no real value. You know, they they kind of hyped them up, you know, their, uh, the telomere length, uh, the, some of the microbiome shifts as if they are, you know, well established that these are absolute indicators for health and longevity. And they overplay that when in reality is it's kind of like, you know, yeah, maybe. maybe, maybe it has something to do. Maybe it doesn't. You know, it's hard to say. TMAO is another one they use. Again, um, and so one of the things that struck out was almost no one was excited about doing a vegan diet. You know, it, it, clearly because it's like it. You know, everybody realized it's not. You know, despite watching the film, I'm still not vegan, guys. Believe it or not, that did not convince me uh, to go vegan. Um, you know, they, they do this, the same sort of sexual, like they did in Game Changer, they show a couple, a couple of people and they show some sort of sexual measurement, which is not particularly scientific. It's, you know, they show two people out of 21, which who knows what the rest of the results are, it wasn't published in the, it certainly didn't seem to come out in the, in the actual paper that this is based upon the Chris Gardner study out of Stanford. And so the, 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 the two females who showed a little bit more blood flow in their genitals after the vegan diet, again, this is again, appeal to emotion, appeal to the basics, basis, the most basis things to try to sell this. Again, they're selling, they're selling. Animal agriculture is cruel. Animal agriculture is killing the planet. Your sex life is going to be better if you go vegan. Everything's going to be better if you're vegan. Uh, they bring in this restaurant, 11, Madis Park, 11 Park Madison or something like that. It's a very well-rated Michelin-starred restaurant that went vegan a couple years ago to basically awful critical reviews. And some of these reviews are still saying it's not very good. Um, you know, the chef, un unfortunately, looks a bit jaundiced to me. I'm not, I don't know if his health is okay, but maybe he's just tired from being a chef. But, you know, and then they focus on this lady that makes cheese, some sort of vegan cheese is, is as if it's somehow superior or better than the actual real product. And again, this is this is a sell, it's selling these fake fake meats, fake cheeses. You know, you got obviously you got Pat Brown in there, um, you know, talking about you know better meat, and, and that has largely been rejected. I mean, the reality of this, people are not wildly adopting these gross fake meats and these gross fake cheeses. That that is still a tiny, tiny bit of market share. And it probably never will go beyond that, despite, I mean, literally billions of dollars of effort, you know, and it's, in, and I will say on the positive side, I mean, again, production value quite high. They have a lot of money to spend on this. So they have all these sort of vegan, you know, wealthy, wealthy donors that push this stuff. Uh, and despite all the money they're spending on this stuff, they don't seem to move the needle because this is this is really 
um, you know, not where people want to go. And, and it, it's not really helping them in any significant way. In fact, of all the metrics they measured, you know, TMAO, telomere length, LDL, LDL cholesterol went down a little bit on the vegan diet, not surprising. Is that actually significantly going to improve their quality of life or longevity? That is at best speculative. You know, I know there's this concern about heart disease, but we're finding out more and more about LDL cholesterol, where this may not be uh, the thing that they think it is, you know, but probably the, the really tangible thing that you could see is at least in the four people they showed, all of the vegans either failed to gain any muscle or lose muscle mass relative to the omnivores. I mean, that was striking to me is that they lost muscle mass, which is consistent with what we see with vegans, despite having Nimai Delgado as their trainer, you know, push, you know, pushing them and, you know, trying to train them hard. And of course they started making excuses, you know, oh, this guy probably didn't train as hard because this and that, well, probably because he was vegan, you know, probably because the vegan diet is inferior for, uh, you know, putting on muscle. It just clearly is. Now you can supplement the hell out of it and really focus on protein really hard and, and, and compensate for that. But that's not what most people are able to do, want to do. A lot of people claim that they just didn't want to eat the food because the vegan food was not very, uh, satisfying, satiating, whatever. It wasn't, it wasn't what they wanted. Right. And so that's a, that's a real problem here. And again, any problems we see with animal agriculture are consistent with all of agriculture. You know, we sort of brush over that. They did this experiment where they took chicken and they took, you know, some contaminated chicken. They showed by touching it, you got, you got it all over the kitchen counter. That's not revolutionary. I mean, that's not, you know, game changing, if you will. I mean, anything you've got a bacteria in hand, you touch everything. It's all over the place. It doesn't, you know, it, you know, food sitting on the counter will accumulate bacteria and other pathogens within minutes. And so just touching that of anything, doesn't matter if it's meat based, plant based, it, you're still going to get the same issue. So they try to make a, an issue. They try to gross you out. You know, they, they show you, oh, we're going to show you the grossest of the gross. And this is how it all, it, it all really is. When the reality is most of us go to the store, we buy meat, we buy dairy, we buy eggs and they're fine. They're completely fine. Right. Uh, they don't make us sick. You know, and this, this overemphasis on saturated fat, we are going to see uh, in, in the coming uh, months, studies coming out there uh, that are showing that saturated fat is not the villain that we think it is. And I think that's, I mean, yeah, there's been a number of studies that have already shown that. But again, they continue harping on two things from a health standpoint, cholesterol and saturated fat. They make up some sort of weird tests that don't really have that much relevance that are not clinically proven or not validated to any significant degree other than kind of speculative and they go with that so the real news is go vegan if you want to lose muscle and uh and you want a virtue signal about saving the planet you know they talk about the brazilian rainforest you know and every this is a, a pat brown quote every time you eat a steak a puff of smoke goes up in the brazilian rainforest right well the reality is I had steaks last night and they came from Kansas. <laughs> I know they came from Kansas. Uh, so that's a lie. That's a flat out lie. And one of the reasons, that, and a lot of people don't realize or talk about this, any, any deforestation that's occurred in Brazil, and by the way, those rates have dramatically dropped over time since, say, the 1980s. But any deforestation um, is in part due to the fact that where the cattle used to graze down in southern Brazil, in the Cerrado, has now been supplanted by sugar production. Sugar fields have taken over much of the grazing land, so the cattle had to go somewhere. So if anything, you can blame the sugar industry for uh, in part in part of that problem. So anyway, um, watch it if you want. Uh, if you want to roll your eyes, uh, you can see it's, it's the same, like I said, it's the same emotional driven message, which will affect some people. There will be some people that go vegan after seeing this film. I am sure of it. And most of them, probably the probably 99% of them will within six weeks quit. You know, a few of them will stick on. Uh, but again, this is what they do. They have high, uh, high dollar propaganda that they shove down everyone's faces. Uh, you, you, you can't be uh, paying attention and not see the constant never ending stream of go plant based, go plant based. This is a narrative that is brought to you by, and who funded this study? Well, one of the beyond meat, of course, uh, these people that want to sell you fake food are funding this message. It's not to save the planet. It's not to make you healthy. It is literally to sell you fake food and make profit. 
All right, guys, so uh, vegan propaganda, you know, bad science, combination of the above, uh, was not compelling to me. Uh, I'm sure some sort of mentally deficient, you know, people, maybe some teenage girls might see this and convert for a period of time. And then, and then 10 years later, we'll have, to, we'll have to fix them. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think if you've watched it. Um, and I'll talk to you soon. I'm going to go eat a steak. See you guys later.